Hey y'all, Miss Brown here, your 8th grade science teacher. So I'm going to keep my mask on because I'm filming out here and I got kids in class. So I will make sure that I speak up so y'all can hear me. So Tuesday, September 29th. <laughs> y'all, you know it's bad when I have to look at the calendar because I can't think about what day it is. Um, so on Tuesday, September 29th, let me check out what we did. And I'll walk y'all through it. Um, and don't forget your podcasts are due on Monday, um, October 5th. And this weekend, I'm going to be checking your science journals, unit two. So you want to make sure that pages one through 17 of your science journal are added to your never-ending slideshow. And y'all don't forget, we're using the same slideshow for unit two. So if you want to do like a unit two page divider, that's cool. I'm recording a video for class. I think Vaughn hit over here being so nosy. Okay. And of course, they don't talk the whole entire time and they start talking as soon as I'm starting to film because, you know, that's how that's how it goes. OK, y'all. So um, review the Kessler slideshow as a class. So I'm going to walk you through this slideshow and tell you um, what it's about. And then y'all are going to do the work in the journal. OK, so get my journal out. Unit two journal. Okay, y'all, so my favorite thing to do, like I've said before, is you always want to open this up into a new tab so that way you can have it, it's easy to see, and then you can save it um, and star it so you have it for future use. And then what y'all are going to do is go to page eight of your journal. So page eight of your journal is our essential question rewrite. So there are five essential questions, so you're going to rewrite the five essential questions and rephrase them next to those five bullet points. And then you're going to give me a summary right here about what the unit is going to be about. So that is page eight of your journal, and it looks just like this. Five bullet points, the five essential questions, and then tell me a gist statement about what we're learning about this year. So on the PowerPoint, on slides two and four are the essential questions. So right here, what is the basic structure of an atom? I would say rephrase the word basic and structure. How is an atom's mass calculated? I would rephrase the statement mass, talk about amount of matter in an object, and find another word for calculated, y'all. You can, you can do this. And then number three, which subatomic particles are electrically charged? Y'all should rephrase subatomic particles because you know what subatomic particles are and you can say that another way. And then questions four and five, um, what are the three main subatomic particles? I would like for y'all to rephrase the word main and located. And then how do protons determine an atom's identity? I want you to rephrase the word determine and identity. So you're going to write those five essential questions here, but rephrase. And then give me a gist statement. What's unit two all about? Let me hop back. And then it says that you're going to work through the slideshow. So kind of check out the slideshow. And then you're going to go to page nine of your journal and you're going to do focused notes. So let me talk through the slideshow real quick. And then... Will be good. So what's an atom? An atom is the basic building block of matter. So it's like Legos. So y'all, I think of Legos and I think of each Lego as like an atom. One sec, y'all. Okay. So the basic unit of a chemical element is an atom. You cannot get any smaller than an atom. If you cut, 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 the smallest thing you can get is an atom. You have protons, neutrons, electrons, but they don't exist on their own. They exist within an atom. So the smallest particle of gold you can get is one single gold atom. Consists of three basic parts. So you have your protons, which are positive, your neutrons, which are neutral, and your electrons, which are negative. So what does an atom look like? The structure of an atom, you have the protons and neutrons in the center, and then you have the electrons that orbit, kind of like bees swarming around a beehive. Um, electrons are in rings, and they're in rings of two in the first shell and then eight in the second shell. Okay, so protons positively charged, they're inside the nucleus, they have an atomic mass of one, and they're equal to the mass of a neutron, and they determine the element's identity, like I've talked about before. Carbon has six protons, if it has seven, it's nitrogen, and if it has five, it's boron. Neutrons, no charge, or neutral, neutrons are neutral. They're also located inside the nucleus, and they have the same mass as protons, one atomic mass unit for each. They might not always be the same. You might have more or less neutrons, and it doesn't affect the charge of the atom because neutrons are neutral. Okay. 
And then, y'all, we're going to learn today that if you have a different number of neutrons, it's called an isotope. So that's a new thing we learned today. So electrons are negatively charged. They're located outside of the nucleus. They swarm the nucleus like bees around a beehive. They're about one two thousandth, so they're very, very teeny. We pretty much say that they don't have any mass at all because they're so small. Um, and they affect the charge of the atom because they have a negative charge. Okay, so I want to talk about this. I'm actually going to scoot back here so I can take my mask off. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. So much better. Um, so this is called a mnemonic, and it's a way that we remember how to calculate the number of protons and electrons. So APE, A-P-E, like an ape, a little monkey. So A stands for atomic number, P stands for protons, and E stands for electrons. So y'all, I've talked a lot about this in my other videos. Atomic numbers like the fingerprint, the identity. So atomic number equals number of protons and number of electrons. So that's just a nice, easy way that we remember. If you're getting confused, like, is it neutrons? Is it electrons, proton? Think of APE. A for atomic number, P for proton, E for electron. And then MAN, mass number minus atomic number equals the number of neutrons, y'all. So the mass number, I'm going to scoot here. The mass number is this bottom number on the periodic table rounded to the nearest whole number. So I'm actually going to open a periodic table. Okay, periodic table, this one's good to go. Okay, so nitrogen's um, atomic mass is 14 point something, which is why we round it either up or down to the nearest whole number. So nitrogen's right here, and this one's good. So yeah, I'm gonna start this one so I have it. <laughs> Um, so right here, nitrogen's atomic mass is 14.007. So that rounds down to 14, which is why nitrogen's mass number is 14. So to find the number of neutrons, you take this mass number rounded 14 and you minus the atomic number, M-A-N. So remember, A, A is atomic number, P is proton and E is electron because they're all equal. And then the mass number minus the atomic number equals the number of neutrons. So that's how we figure out that nitrogen has seven protons, seven neutrons, and seven electrons. Okay, y'all. So here is the periodic table, and it shows all the different elements on Earth. Um, it was created by my man, Dmitry Mendeleev, and we'll learn a little bit about him a little later on. And then here's the element square. Each of these element squares are one of the squares on the periodic table of elements. And it tells you the atomic number, which is the number of protons. It tells you the element name, the element symbol, and then the atomic mass. Typically, the element square will have the rounded um, with the decimals, I mean, so that's the atomic mass. When you shorten it up to the nearest whole number, that's called the mass number. So I want you all to take a minute, um, pause me, and try to figure these answers out. I will wait. Okay, so you should have paused me and figured these out. So carbon, if it has six neutrons and its mass number is 12, remember this mass number minus the atomic number gives you the number of neutrons. So you can technically take these two numbers and subtract them and it will give you the number of protons. So 12 minus six is six. So carbon's protons is six. And if you wanna double check, Go to the periodic table of elements and go to carbon, and I can see that carbon's atomic number is six, so I know that's right, because the number of protons is the atomic number. Now, if beryllium has four protons, it means its atomic number is four, and if it has five neutrons, then I can figure out the mass number by adding four plus five to get nine. Now, there's a typo on this one, y'all. So protons is five, so I'm gonna to go to my periodic table of elements and I'm gonna see which element is five. So that's boron. What is 10.8 round to? Rounds up to 11. So it's mass number, this is a typo, should technically be 11. So we know that this is boron, B-O-R-O-N. Now magnesium has 12 protons and its mass number is 24. So to find neutrons, M-A-N, you take the mass number, 24, minus the atomic number 12, and I would have 12 neutrons. So can you describe the structure of atoms, including the mass, electrical charge, and location of all subatomic particles? So nucleus has protons and neutrons. Neutrons are neutral. Protons are positive. The electrons with a negative charge orbit around the nucleus in shells or rings. First shell has two. Second shell has eight. 
Um, protons and neutrons have the same mass, about one atomic mass unit, and electrons are about one two thousandth, so they're a lot smaller. We say that they pretty much are zero mass. Um, and you can identify an element by its number of protons because remember the number of protons is the atomic mass, I mean the atomic number. And then to find neutrons, you take the um, atomic mass, round it to the nearest whole number, either up or down. Remember 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 rounds down, and then 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 rounds up. So you take the atomic mass, round it to the nearest whole, so 10.8, round it as 11, and then you subtract the atomic number. So if the atomic number is 5, you do 11 minus 5 equals 6. So boron would have 6 neutrons. And I think that's it, y'all. So have the best day, and I will be coming at you with our Wednesday, Thursday videos. Bye, y'all. Love each and every one of you, and you fill my buckets every day. Overflowing. Bye, y'all.